Let me say something controversial right out the gate. I'm somebody who supports the Second Amendment of the United States Constitution, which is the right to bear arms. I'm somebody who comes to gun ownership by way of hunting, which has taught me a lot about sustainability and conservation and nature. But even though I support the Second Amendment, I am also somebody who's experienced an attempted robbery at gunpoint. I've lived in neighborhoods that were ravaged by gun violence. I have seen the aftermath of a police shootout where car hijackers uh, were right outside of my office building. And I'm also somebody who's experienced depression and suicidal thoughts to the point where I once imagined holding a gun in my hand and I imagined taking that gun and putting it to the side of my head and feeling a sense of relief as that imagined barrel pressed against my temple. Guns have affected a large part of my life, and like many people in the United States, I'm extremely worried about the epidemic of gun violence that we are experiencing. Which is why in 2019, when I was coming up with an ordination project to do, I decided to do a gun buyback program, inspired by authors Shane Claiborne and Mike Martin and their book Beating Guns. Now, a lot of people looked at me and said, you live in a very small rural town in South Carolina. Why are you doing this? And the answers are pretty simple. Preventing gun violence is not just an issue of personal holiness, it's also an issue of social holiness. And I point you to paragraph 162 in our Book of Discipline and resolution 3428 in our Book of Resolutions if you want the details of our polity relating to gun violence and how we should prevent it. But more than that, we United Methodists are people of the book. We believe in the primacy of scripture, and scripture is pretty clear that we should prevent violence whenever it's possible to do so. In fact, in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 2, verse 4, we read that the prophet longs for the day when the people of Israel will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks, and a day when nation will not draw sword against nation, and the people will train for war no more. And we also see Jesus in the Gospels be pretty blunt with his disciples and his followers when he says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall receive, they shall be called God's children. Now, when most of us tend to think about gun-related violence, mass shootings are often the first thing that comes to mind, and while they are very horrific, they only account for a very small percentage of gun-related deaths in the U.S. The vast majority of gun-related deaths in the United States actually come from suicide. In the U.S., suicide is the tenth leading cause of death, and in 2019, when I was looking up some uh, statistics for my program, I learned some pretty horrifying things, that almost half of all suicides use a gun to assist, and the same is true vice versa. And at the time when I was doing this research, 129 people were dying by suicide every day on average, 22 of which were veterans. And while women were more likely to attempt suicide, men were 3.5 times more likely to complete suicide, especially if they're white and middle class. And here in South Carolina, those statistics hold up pretty well, except they're a little bit more exacerbated because South Carolina is 50th in the nation when it comes to mental health first aid, especially access and quality of care. We are the only state where there is an increasing rate of suicide in the Southeast, and also 90% of all suicides are um, completed with the use of a gun. So with all of that in mind, I decided to make the gun buyback program that I was going to do have a lens of suicide prevention and gun safety promotion. So here's how we did it. Through a really successful social media campaign and lots of wonderful local coverage across the state, we were able to fundraise over $7,000 towards the purchase of Walmart gift cards. And what we did is we had people come on a certain day, at a certain location, at a certain time, and they would bring their guns, and in return for turning over their guns, we would hand them Walmart gift cards of varying amounts, depending on the types of guns they turned over. 
We also had a communion station for anybody who wanted to take communion at the gun buyback program. And we had a nonpartisan nonprofit group called Be Smart sit with us. Be Smart is a gun safety promotion group affiliated with Moms Demand Action and Every Town for Gun Safety. Once we were finished with the gun buyback program, we handed the weapons over to local police who ran the serial numbers to make sure that they weren't stolen guns. And once it was determined that none of them were stolen, they disarmed the guns. They chopped them up into small pieces so that they couldn't be used to recreate new weapons. We then handed those pieces over to a blacksmith who used them to create gardening tools and art, literally enacting the words of the prophet Isaiah, turning tools for weapons into tools for creation and recreation. And the remainder of the money that we fundraised went to offset some of those blacksmithing costs. The program itself was a wild success. We received 20 guns, which was double the original amount, the double the original goal I had set. And we had all sorts of people participate. We had a father and a son on their way to a dove shoot. We had a an 80-year-old member of the local American Legion chapter. We even had a veteran who drove an hour and a half to turn over his guns because he really liked what we were advertising. So what did I learn most from this experience? The biggest thing I learned is that people are literally dying for this kind of prophetic action from religious leaders and faith communities. I saw how so many people in letters and cards that were sent in emails appreciated the work that we were doing, how they didn't have faith in our government authorities to change laws, but how they had faith in the gun buyback initiative that I did. I also had people who sent me comments saying, I'm not a Christian, but if I lived in Saluda, I would attend your church. It was really important for me to combat this stereotype of American Christians and how American Christians worship their guns more than they worship Jesus. And people really want faith communities to take mental health first aid extremely seriously. And yes, it is true that gun buybacks are not a silver bullet solution for the larger problem of all sorts of gun violence, but it is a quick way to prevent harm and also promote gun safety, and even help people with a little bit of grocery money if that's their struggle too. So what I also want to do is cast a dream and share with folks that gun buybacks don't necessarily have to just be about guns. I believe that they can be a part of a larger, more comprehensive mental health first aid plan that churches can enact wherever they are not just in rural areas, but also urban areas, wherever churches do ministry. Imagine going to a mental health first aid fair that is sponsored by churches, where you can turn over a gun that you no longer feel safe using, and you can do a lot of other things. You can get a referral for a therapist. You can find out what sorts of community support groups are in your local area. You can learn about free and reduced services that are provided by different organizations. You can get some maybe financial coaching or walk away with a functional resume. There are lots of different ways that gun buybacks can bring lots of different service providers together to combat the effects of violence and addiction and neglect and abuse and trauma. I hope and I pray that churches everywhere as the body of Christ will take very seriously, very soon, the problem of gun violence and work to prevent it before it begins to consume us completely and potentially destroy our very precious body. Thank you, and amen.